So yeah, my name is uh, Ryan Ayler, work with Ag Leader. Um, if uh, you've heard me speak before, I've kind of told my story a little bit, uh, so if, uh, forgive me for saying this again, but uh, I got started in uh, the precision farming world in uh, 1997, and the way I got started, my dad was very influential in it. Um, he bought a, uh, <clears throat> a yield monitor system, and it was a big white box that said Ag Leader on the outside of it. And uh, he pretty much handed it to me and said, uh, here you go, go have fun with it. So we got her installed and uh, got it calibrated, and I kind of taught him how to run things and how to do everything that way. And through that process, it really opened up my eyes as to the possibilities of what you could do with GPS and data collection and, and uh, the opportunities there. And so I went off to Purdue and kind of geared my education towards that. I uh, graduated in 2000 and been working with uh, Ag Leader products ever since. So now 17 years later, I'm blessed with a, a wife and uh, five kids. Uh, one, one of them is actually here with me today. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a fun ride. So that's kind of my background, where I came from. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking about the on-farm research here. And uh, going to be talking a little bit about why we do it. Um, what we're after, uh, but really going to spend most of the time on kind of how we do it. And just a real simple, um, ground-level, practical way to do it. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about here. So first, why? Um, you guys probably know this, but uh, growers have a ton of decisions to make uh, on any given day. And on-farm research, or another word for it is strip trials, is a way to help you make better decisions. So you guys probably know that good decisions can lead to more money, maybe less pain, less difficulties, less challenges on the farm. So we like to make good decisions. A lot of times data can help us make good decisions. We just got to get it in the right form to where we can make those decisions. So, so that's kind of why um, a couple of challenges there that we see is this process, you know, working with strip trials can be complex and it can be, uh, can, can take a lot of time. Um, timeliness is kind of a key thing there. So I wanted to talk about those two quickly. And the example I'm going to go, be going through today is just a simple, um, let's say I put some strip trials out and I wanted to test uh, a late in application on my farm, okay? So your monitor might look something like this, where you've got these green strips, and that's where we went out late in the season, and we put down some extra nitrogen. And so that's kind of the, the uh, example that we're following here. So the complexity in this, we've kind of outlined six different steps that typically up to today that we've had to go through in order to collect that data and to get it to a place where we can make decisions. Okay, so step one is collecting the data, right? So out in the machine, you're uh, actually collecting the data, getting uh, the results in, or getting the data collected onto the monitor. Step two is uh, exporting the data, and typically that's using a thumb drive, so going from the monitor to a thumb drive of some, of some type. Step three is taking that thumb drive, getting it into some sort of software that can read the data and make sense of it. Then there's usually a fourth step in there where you manage the data. Sometimes you got to fix your field names. Uh, sometimes you got data in the wrong field that you got to organize. A little bit of cleaning and processing of the data. So that's another step there too. And then finally, you get it into a form where you can easily view it, whether that's a map or some reports or spreadsheets or th something that way. And then the last step there is then to actually make decisions based on the information that you have. Yeah, can everybody relate to that? Does that make sense? So in my 17 years, I've seen a trend with this process. Okay, this, this graph here is just my own observations. It's no scientific research of any type. It's just my estimates of what I've seen where we lose guys along these steps. So step number one, collecting the data. Most guys can do that fairly successfully. 
Now, there's an argument of whether you're collecting good data or not. You know, there's garbage data that can be, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Um, so a lot of guys do that well, but when we go to export the data onto the thumb drive, I've noticed that we start losing some guys there. And my estimate is only 40% of guys that um, are growing, uh, are farming, are actually getting the data out of the monitor onto a thumb drive of some type. And then the next step is actually getting that data into some sort of software that can make sense of it. And again, we lose another big chunk of guys. My estimate is we're down to 20% at this point. Okay, and then so on and so forth. Here we're down to 15% to the point where we get down to maybe 5% of guys are successfully making decisions from the data they're collecting. Anybody relate to that? Anybody struggled along that process? Yeah, so I've seen my own dad do this, and I've seen many, many customers do this. So it's a, it's a big challenge. It's complex, and, and there's some difficulties there. So there are now some ways to skip over some of these steps. Um, some of it deals with the wireless data transfer and better mapping tools. Um, other ways that we're doing this is instead of dealing with other devices, such as a laptop computer or even a smartphone or a tablet, let's do as much as we can on that monitor that's in the cab. Okay? Because if we don't have to move data at all, boy, there's a lot of stumbling blocks that we're not having to deal with. So that's one way to simplify, and I'll show you how we're doing that. But, uh, yeah, the goal, if, if, we can, if we can jump over a lot of these steps, then the reality is we can prevent losing a lot of folks along the way. And that's part of the goal there. Okay, another challenge is timeliness. When do you guys um, do most of your analysis in the real world? What's that? Off season? Okay. What about in the cab when you're harvesting that field? Is that, does that ring a bell with anyone? I know that's when my dad is making his observations. He's looking at the field. He's seeing how it's producing, the low spots, the high spots, uh, seeing some of the mistakes he made earlier that season. So I would argue that most analysis happens in the cab when we're harvesting. And... Here's another one of my uh, homegrown charts here. Again, this is just my own observations. No scientific research to back this up. But I would argue that in order to make decisions, good decisions from data, the more time that we allow to pass, the less likely it is to actually make a decision off of that. So the most likely time to make decisions or observations is when we're in the field harvesting that, that crop. As an hour goes by, we finish the field, and an hour later, what are we thinking about now? We're thinking about the, the next field that we're in, right? So the field that we finished is kind of in the back of our mind. Now we're thinking about where we're at now. Uh, a day goes by, a month goes by, six months go by, and the reality is, is we're, we, we're not thinking about what happened in that field as much. So making decisions off of that, what we learned, is less likely. So timeliness is, is a big challenge there as well. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, a real-world um, practical use of how to get over some of these challenges and, and uh, how to keep it in the cab there. Now, you'll see that uh, I'll have several screenshots here. All of these screenshots come from our InCommand 1200 display, um, just so you're um, connecting with that. So let's go back to our example of a late-end side dress, or a late-end strip trial um, here. So again, the green strips there are where we put down some nitrogen later on in the season, uh, and we alternated passes there. And uh, what Kaylee was talking about earlier and how to set up these passes was, was really good. So I'm not really talking about, you know, how to set this up. I'm just, just showing you where these strip trials have occurred. And if you guys have seen a movie where, uh, where they show the ending first, 
Have you guys ever seen a movie like that? They show the ending first, and then, then you know, the rest of the movie is kind of how do they got to that ending. That's kind of what I'm doing here. The results that we're after, or the results that we're going to get, is this right here. Okay, this is a summary report that is on the in-command display. And you might be able to see that there. It says late N and normal N, and it shows a yield result of, of those two things there. So that's kind of the answer that we're getting after. How much yield response did I get from that late in application? We also might see an, a map there on the screen, and we might see some strips there, uh, see some yield response in the map. Um, maybe see that, maybe not, but that's, that's another outcome that we might be looking for. Okay, so how did we get to this summary report? How did that data get to where it's at? That's what I'm going to walk through here now. Okay, so we fire up the combine, we've got our in-command display running, and we're ready to start harvesting. We hit the split screen button on the in-command display, which is this button right here, and that now divides my screen into two. We have the ability to pull up previous or historic maps on the split screen. So what map do you think I pulled up here? Does that look familiar? It's, it's that late season end application that I did several weeks ago. Okay, so I've pulled that up while I'm harvesting so that I can see where those strip trials occurred. Well, why is that significant? So now as I'm harvesting, my icon shows me where I am in the field and in relation to where those strip trials occurred. And that's kind of a big deal because now I can use our region tool and I can tell it, okay, now we're harvesting the late end application. And then I pick from the list as well that we're harvesting our normal end application. So I'm basically telling the yield monitor, okay, let's put this data in one basket over here for the late end. And then I switch it over to, okay, this is our normal nitrogen program now. So it simply divides that data when we tell it to. This, this, this would be a pick list uh, that we choose. And um, so as we are harvesting you know, on these strips here, we're going to tell it, okay, this is late in data. And when we're not harvesting those strips, it's not late in. Okay, and so that signals the monitor then to be able to tell the difference between the two. If uh, any of you guys have used the variety tracking type of features in our displays, it's kind of similar to this. So it's the same kind of tool uh, that way. And then if I want to access that summary report, I just go to my home screen and I hit this little spreadsheet looking button up here and it takes me to that summary report. And I can do that on the fly or I can wait till the end of the field and see the results of that. And then, again, with the, the map, I can look at several different views. And this icon always shows me my relation to my strip trials. And then I can see how my yield map is responding there as well. So here I'm looking at a bird's eye view. Over here I'm looking at a perspective view. And in this case, I had a pretty good response where I can see, see that yield response in those strips in that map. So not only is it obvious to the eye and the yield map, but I can see it in that summary report as well and see the actual numbers. Does that make sense? So very s simple ground level way of doing strip trials, a uh, way of analyzing them really. Uh, and all of this was done with the monitor in the cab. I never had to um, exchange data anywhere else. I never had to use any other apps or other devices. It all just stayed in my monitor. Sometimes simplicity is good that way. If you want to take your data outside of the cab, we do have uh, an Agfinity mobile app that can show you those same sum reports and the yield maps. Uh, I can also view it on my smartphone, and uh, I can do that as well. Okay, here is a, uh, a challenge that you might or might not run into. Um, our farm specifically does have this challenge. What if my data is on multiple displays? So on our farm, we've got two displays that run in the spring. One's in the corn planter, one's in the soybean planter. Um, one moves to the sprayer, the other one moves to the nitrogen applicator. 
And then in the fall, we just pick one of those displays and move it into the combine. So the problem that we have is when we go to harvest, we've got the monitor that may not have the nitrogen data in it. You follow me there? It's on the other monitor that's sitting in a different machine somewhere. So how do I, how do I move that data? Well, we recently released a, cool, uh, a tool called DisplayCast. And it is a, a tool that most will think of the use of it is if I have two machines in the same field and they want to work together and use auto swath and share AB lines and things like that. And so it does do that. Um, here's a screenshot where we've got two vehicle icons in the same field and they're both working on the same field and exchanging data every five seconds and synchronizing that way. And so that's one use of it. But the other use is just what I described. I've got maps in one display that I need to get to a different display so that I can do that side-by-side -side comparison there. And that's what DisplayCast will do for me as well. So it will move those maps for me. Okay, to finish up, I just wanted to show a couple of screenshots of customers who have done the process that I was just talking about here and, and some screenshots of what they were looking at. This guy here was uh, doing a fungicide application. And uh, so you can see some of the strips that he did of fungicide versus no fungicide. And then he had his uh, yield map on this side, and he was working his way towards that fungicide application. But again, he can see exactly where that application occurs, so he can get a good comparison of how much response we got from that. Here's a guy that did population planting population trials. So on the right, you can see the planting population map. Uh, the darker green are the heavier seeding populations. Uh, medium is, and then light. Um, you can see in the yield map here that red strip is responding to that light uh, planting population. So he definitely had a, a yield loss with that lower population. Here's a, a guy that did a variety comparison. So on the right, you have the blues and the reds are different varieties. And you can see in the yield map on the left, there, especially up in this area here, there is uh, an obvious yield response to that you could see in the yield map there as well. Now there, there may be occasions or situations where you want to go beyond just the in-cab analysis like what we showed here. So there may be times where the data is maybe too complex to show just on the monitor. Um, and we can use you know, a tool like SMS or there's other good mapping programs out there that can bring that data in, um, do some deeper analysis on it, and, um, and get you some better answers that way as well. Also, I know there's a lot of good consultants in the room that can uh, work with you and, and do these kind of things as well. So the in-cab stuff that I was talking about is not the magical answer to everything, and you guys probably know that, but it is a quick, simple way to get some um, quick observations maybe, and maybe that drives you on to deeper analysis. Okay, But the key is, is that it's simple. Okay, There's no data exchange there. It's just real simple. Everything's in the cab. It's one device. You're not dealing with a, a whole cab full of different devices. Um, and it's timely. It's real time. So you're actually seeing these numbers as the crop rolls into the machine when you're actually thinking about that field and you're doing your in-head analysis type stuff. So th those are some key things that you don't want to let go of. Sometimes we get some good intentions of doing strip trials. It's real easy to get too complicated in a hurry and then you lose the whole, you lose the whole program because you're too complicated.